Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. We are here to talk about a beer that was born in this very kitchen. It was. It was the second, the little beer right. from the Party Guile. Right. The second beer of the Party Guile brew, which was a very fun day. A little too fun, little but too fun. <laughs> <laughs> but the last episode we we tasted the big barley wine, the big English barley wine, which was the first beer out of the Party Gal Brew. Yeah, uh, which you can see that, uh, and I'll put it on YouTube. I'll put a link down here somewhere <laughs> to that one. Yeah. But what we're talking about is the beer uh, that you got from the second runnings out of that mm -hmm. mash tun. So we so we we brew a beer. We yes. pull the first runnings. We ferment that. We pull the second runnings, which would be the sparge, yes. and make that into a beer. Right. And so this is the second runnings. This is for people who are having trouble keeping up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so talk about the details. So you essentially just put, what, three more gallons of water in the mash tun, yeah. drain that out, yep. and then what happened? And then I let that ferment on USO5. Well, wait a minute. You skipped the whole... <laughs> What? <laughs> you skipped the whole thing about boiling and well, putting yeah, grains in I the figure, boil. Figure, That's the important that. part. No, they don't know that. Go ahead. It's going to be a very short show if you don't, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't fill in those details. So I, 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 I don't remember. <laughs> I, I pulled the, I pulled the uh, second runnings. We boiled that. We rehopped it with um, whatever we hopped it with. Well, you put you put the specialty grains in a oh, in a right. bag in the kettle. So, which is different from putting the specialty grains in the mash tun. And we'd never done that before. Put those I, those dark specialty grains in the kettle uh, and steep those for a while before you brought up uh, that up to a boil. Mm -hmm. And then you put some brown sugar in there as well. I did. And then you, we put the hops in there as well, and you fermented that with uh, USO5. But you didn't now stop come, there. This is where the you didn't stop there part yes. resonates with me. <laughs> because <laughs> up until there, I'm just brewing a beer. Okay, we, up, yeah, up until then, we were, we were re-chewing the cabbage exactly. that people have already seen on the show. A million times. So, but you, but you, knowing Steve, you know it's very, if it's very hard for Steve just to brew a simple beer and just let it no, go. It's can't. like, oh, I'll put a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So, what did you do after the beer fermented? So, after the beer fermented, I added I, on the secondary, I added two entre chilies, mm. which are the dried poblanos, and they're very raisiny. They have a lot of kind of raisin, chocolatey flavors going on in there, and four pounds of fresh Michigan cherries. Ooh. And let it sit on the on the secondary for almost a month. Wow, a long time. Racked it off, fermented it out. I mean, um, you know, let it do its thing. Bottled it. Yeah, bottled it. And what a beer! This is it. So, how did you treat the cherries? All I did, I didn't. I I, I put them in a in a, a pot, and I took a potato masher and I mashed them up. Were they frozen? They were not frozen. I didn't freeze them. Okay. And I. Um, just mash them up. I left the pits in there. So and and some people say that you get a little bit of roastiness or a little mm -hmm. you know flavor mm -hmm. out of the pits themselves. Let them all in there, the whole bit. And I just put a funnel up there and got them through the funnel into the carboy. Oh, wow! Put them in there and let it do its thing for about a month. And this this is the beer. I got to say that that this beer paired with that. English barley wine have got to be two of my favorite oh. of your beers. These are, I would buy this every day. I mean, it's not an everyday drinker because it's, what was the original gravity uh, before you put the cherries in there? It was like 1069, yeah, 1069. before you put the cherries in, in there. In 1012 when it was done. Yeah. 7.2% so. beer. So Be the little before beer. You, before you put the cherries in there. So Yeah. Because, well, the, the yeah. brown sugar brought right, the right. fermentables up. Right. And what I'm amazed with with this beer is that you it really, I can mm. really taste the cherries. Mm -hmm. You can see them. The head is, um, yeah, you know, a little red. It has a pinkish hue. <laughs> it does have a pinkish hue. <laughs> and, but you still, but you get the entree too. You do. You get the, a little bit of heat in the back, a little astringency that's really nice. Mm -hmm. You that's wouldn't, a, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think of just mixing cherries and ancho chili peppers together, or at least I wouldn't. But together with the kind of porter esque mm -hmm. quality. Uh, I don't guess you would call it a strict porter because you put the brown sugar in there. Yeah. But the but the brown sugar oh. notes 
uh, the roasty notes of the grain, the, the kind of dark fruit raisiny character of the ancho chilies, and then the brightness of the, of the, the cherries. Whew. Yeah, man. This is a great beer. I would pair this beer with duck or lamb. Mm. I mean, any kind of that, you know, those kind of minerally meats. Oh my God, our favorite chicken livers. Oh my God. Would be killer with this. You are correct. I am correct, sir. The, because uh, it, uh, there is, I wouldn't call it a stringency, I'd call it a tartness. Because the stringency to me is, yeah, a, is, is a, negative a negative word connotation. Right. Uh, I don't think it's astringent. I think it's more kind of a tart uh, bite, which I like. I like sour beers. I like tart beers. I wouldn't call it a sour beer. Ooh. Newsflash. We should sour this. <laughs> not this, but we should do this beer, and we should sour it. Well, why not? <laughs> no, actually, uh, you, could, you could, in theory, uh, decant whatever you've got left. Two bottles. Oh, that may, well, that's a small batch. <laughs> But you could add some lactobacillus in there and put that into a into a fermenter for a while and see what happens. Who knows? Yeah. This would make a nice sour beer, though. Mm. Well, you know, it's super easy drinking. The thing too. about it, the thing about it is this: is that party guile brewing does not have to be complicated. It can be inventive. It's really two small batches. Mm -hmm. You could think of it that way. And I got two very different beers out of it yeah. out of one day. I didn't get a lot of either one, but that's okay, and, that, and who cares? But what I got were two really d delicious beers that I've been able to share with some friends, enjoy myself. That's what brewing's about. Amen, brother. Amen. <laughs> so there you go. Try it. If you try it, let us know. Yeah. Happy brewing. Happy brewing. Come and visit us on the web. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of both our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs, extract brewing and partial mashing, stepping into all grain, low-tech lagering and decoction mashing, introduction to wine kits, and our Basic Brewing Brewer's Logbook, where you can track and log up to 50 batches of beer. Drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Write to James at basicbrewing.com, Steve at basicbrewing.com, or just use the contact form on basicbrewing.com. I forgot all about that actual brewing part. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was really focused on the cherries. <laughs> <laughs>